January of 2013, I received a text message out of the blue from my older sister, Carrie, telling me that she'd signed up for the Walt Disney World Marathon, and she was wondering if she was an idiot. <laughs> I had asked if she had ever run a, fi uh, mar or fi bleh, a marathon before, and she said, no, but I've run a 5K once. I had asked why is she doing this, who's she doing this with, and she said, I'm running this race alone because I want to prove to myself that I can. So before I answered her question, I ended up on the website looking up information about the race and finding myself pondering like, wow, this is so impressive of her to do this. Is this something I should be trying to do? Something try, I try to improve for myself? And before I knew it, all of a sudden I was signed up for the race and texting her back, well, now we're both idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we had a year to prepare for this race because it wasn't until the following January and I spent that entire year doing absolutely no preparation. I think I gained a few pounds. My sister, on the other hand, spent a lot of time training. She was doing a lot of running, wanted to make sure she was in good shape. That had stopped abruptly about three months prior when she found out that she was unexpectedly pregnant with her second child. Uh, things didn't get better when we got down to Florida. Uh, a couple days before the race, while we were walking around, she hurt her knee, and that was kind of started to bother her. And instead of resting it the day before the race, we spent the entire day walking around Disney World instead. I, on the other hand, did a little research to find out some things about the race, kind of good tips for racing. Say, get some really good running shoes. That'd be a good idea. And everything I found online were really expensive, so I settled for a really comparable pair at Target, 20 bucks. And I want to make sure they were in perfect condition, so I made sure not to wear them whatsoever until the morning of the race. Uh, it also had something about pacing. So there are these people they hire that pace the race to make sure you stay ahead of it uh, so that they can open traffic up behind all the racers. And if you're not past them at certain points, you get shuffled onto a bus and your race day is over. So we want to make sure we're ahead of those people. The way they identify them is they wrap these uh, strings around them and put a giant balloon about 30 feet in the air so everyone on the racetrack can see where they are at all times. So the morning of the race, we get about 4 o'clock because the race starts at 5. We get down to the track, but we find out that we're in the very last grouping because we're not particularly runners. So they make sure everyone gets ahead of us before us slow people get our uh, race started. And since we were down there for so long, my bladder got the best of me, and as soon as the race started, I rushed off to a pork potty on the side of the uh, racetrack. Uh, my sister forged ahead. She didn't have to go to the bathroom, so as soon as we got out, I kind of forgot that it was 5.45 in the morning, so it was incredibly dark. And I forgot that it had rained the night before, so as soon as I go rushing off, I splash right into a puddle. That soaks all up into my brand new shoes and my socks, twists my ankle a little bit, and I can't really deal with it because i got to catch up with my sister, so I go sprinting ahead. Uh, at about three miles in was the first time my foot really started to be like agonizingly painful. I looked down and the shoelaces had kind of bunched in a little bit of a way that was just really causing a lot of pain. So I committed the ultimate cardinal sin and took the shoe off, took the sock off, and I just tried to dry it off, reconfigured it. And ultimately what that does is allow your foot and your ankle to swell. So it's almost more agonizing when you're trying to put the shoe back on. My sister's knees had started to bother her, but she said she'd be fine. The biggest hurdle came at 13 miles, which was halfway through the race. And at that point in time, my sister kind of hobbled over to a fence on the side of the racetrack and sat down. I walked up to her and I said, you're doing all right? She said, it's okay, I just need a minute to rest. And as we were talking, I started to notice this giant Mickey Mouse balloon getting closer and closer to us. And before we knew it, all of a sudden, a 60-year-old woman with a balloon tied around her waist comes by going, the buses are around the corner! I turned to my sister and I said, we made a half marathon, that's pretty impressive, nobody expected us to do that, so if you want to call it, we can get on that bus and go home. She did the most cliche thing I've ever seen, almost like an old war movie, where she looked up at me and said, you go ahead, I'll catch up. <laughs> In that moment, I fought her and I argued, and she said, no, 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 you go, I'll catch up. So I had tears in my eyes and I turned and I ran away from her <laughs> because I knew in that moment I had to run this race for both of us and I had to finish this for both of us. Uh, I sprinted up to get past the balloon lady, I sprinted to get past the bus stop and as soon as I got past the safe point I turned around and I stopped and I watched as the balloon lady got closer and closer. And in the distance my sister started hobbling forward as fast as she could and as soon as I knew it she was side by side with the balloon lady. She passed the bus stop and grabbed me by the arm and we kept going. We finished that race side by side for the most part. As soon as we got to the finish line, we linked arms again and we crossed together. It was something that we never thought we'd be able to do. It was something we definitely never would have been able to do without each other. 
And it's something we both agreed we will never do again. 